All right, folks, happy Friday. I uh, hope you're all uh, ready for the weekend. Uh, two very, well, potentially very quick and easy installs here today. Uh, hopefully they're easy. Um, what I'm installing today is our, uh, my improved racing um, rear uh, sway bar links um, that I got here from improved racing. Uh, I'll include the link in the description if I can find it. And then the other thing I'm installing are my um, ground wires that I got from uh, JP3 uh, Motorsports. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, as I go through, I'll talk to you why I need to do this and why I should do this but don't necessarily need to do it. So, all right, back in a second. Okay, so here I am at the um, rear uh, right uh, suspension. And so this is why uh, I kind of need to install those um, improved racing links. So your stock links, for whatever reason, Mazda decided to make them out of plastic. Uh, I'm not sure why they made that decision. I, I can only assume, you know, when, when Mazda designed the FD, they tried to make it, they wanted to make it as light as possible. And in doing so, there's a few compromises they had to make. And I think this was probably one of them. Um, it just, I don't know. Um, I, mean, I could be wrong on that, but in my opinion, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to make your end links out of plastic, considering they're going to be under some stress as you're cornering. Uh, but nevertheless, your stock ones are plastic, um, so you might want to think about uh, replacing them. If you want to keep the, the original stock ones, I mean, these are pretty commonly found part. As a matter of fact, when I replaced my suspension in my rear sway bar, I bought these new from Atkins Rotary. So, I mean, they are out there, but I don't know. Uh, I just felt uh, it'd be better to have them be uh, metal. The other reason why you want to replace them, so if you happen to go with aftermarket suspension like I did, your the clevis here is a little bit thicker and your, um, your end link is the same bolt as the lower attachment for uh, your um, coilover. So uh, if you notice that the uh, nut on there is not, I, I mean, it's just barely enough uh, to get enough threads on there to be secure. Same thing, I mean, it probably would be okay, but I don't know, I just wasn't too keen on it. Um, you know, if the parts from Improved Racing didn't exist, I'd probably be kind of comfortable with it, but I was like, ah, screw it, whatever. Um, I'll just go ahead and replace these. So, all right, now's the time, so I'll be back here in a second. All right, so uh, there they are side by side, the new uh, Improved Racing one versus the um, stock OEM one. And as you can see, that lower uh, mounting bolt is uh, a bit longer, uh, so it gives you the clearance that you need if you happen to have aftermarket um, coilovers. The other thing that's really great about these, so your stock one, sorry about that, so your stock one has, uh, you know, pre-filled um, greased uh, fittings, you know, which it's fine, but it's going to deteriorate over time. The improved racing one uh, has these nice, uh, I don't know if those aren't pillow bearings per se, uh, I forget the name of that. Um, it's not Elastomeric. But anyway, it's got nice metal bearings, uh, for lack of better words. Um, and it comes with everything you need. Um, it comes with the, all the uh, lock nuts and shit to go on there. So it's pretty fantastic. Uh, I like it. And so it's going to go in, and we'll be back here in a second. All right, so we're back, and that's it. That's it installed there. Uh, pretty easy. Not really hard to do at all. Um, I would have done it at the same time that I did um, my coilovers and my sway bar, but uh, it just it took them a minute for, for them to come in, so no big deal. There it is. Super easy. All right. Uh, back in a second, I'll talk about those uh, grounding straps that I got from uh, JP3. The only last thing I'll say, um, I don't mean to insult anyone at Intelligence, but if you've never uh, messed with sway bars before or end links, just remember you're going to have to take both sides off. Uh, in order to get the the new one on because what will happen is you take one side out and that'll put um, the as long as the other one is still connected it'll put some um, torsion on the sway bar and it'll be hard to get the new one in so you know just take both of them off then the sway bar will go up and down easily uh, and then uh, you'll be able to put the new ones in no problem uh, these are adjustable um, so just make sure you know you um, uh, adjust it to where it slides in the uh, bolt slides in and out of the hole there on the sway bar easily and then make sure you tighten it up that jam up there so all right that's it back in a second all right so let's talk about the grounding kit that you can get from jp3 motorsports so 
Uh, there are two kits you can get, one of which is the exhaust uh, grounding kit, which comes with two grounding straps, and then the firewall grounding uh, kit, which just comes with one. So let's talk about the exhaust one for now. So here I am, I'm at the rear of the car. Um, this is just after the, you know, uh, cat there. Uh, and this is the rest of the exhaust pipe there. So now stock, your car does come with one uh, grounding strap here. Uh, but they get a little bit, just, you know, corroded, frayed, whatever over time. So this is where one of them goes. You can see I've already installed the nice shiny new one from JP3 Motorsports there. Uh, you have to take this uh, skid plate off there to get to the other end. But you can see where it just bolts up to the exhaust. And then, you know, if underneath the uh, this plate here is where it uh, connects to the uh, uh, body. So, so that's one of them, and I'll be right back uh, with the other one. All right, so this is the uh, other exhaust. I, sorry about the poor video here. I'm just barely squeezing underneath my car here. But um, this is the other um, exhaust grounding strap that the uh, JP3 kit will come with. Now, your car doesn't have one here stock, uh, but um, the JP3 kit uh, allows you to put one more on there. So same thing, you just uh, ground it to the frame there, and then it just connects uh, right now. So this is, I am forward of the catalytic converter, uh, and this is the rear flange of the uh, downpipe there. So that's where the other one goes. And I'll be back in a second, and I'll talk about the um, firewall one. All right. All right. So I want to talk a minute here um, to um, point out the stock one. So this is the um, stock one that came off my uh, exhaust. You know, I mean, it's not terrible, but you can see over the years, I mean, it's gotten worn out or whatever. Maybe it's a little frayed there where it connects. But anyway, that's the old one. The firewall one. Now, if you have a... Um, Chances are your firewall ground will look like this, right? Basically, this end here connects to the back of the upper intake manifold, and then you have this cable here that connects to almost like a little electrical connector to this metal piece here that attaches to the firewall um, on the right-hand side. So if you have a right-hand drive car like me, it's like just to the uh, left of the uh, master cylinder, but you know if you have a left-hand drive uh, vehicle, it, it'll probably be like to the left of your um, ABS unit or something. So uh, a thing or two about this. Um, I was doing some research online, and uh, apparently um, there was a time where Mazda no longer um, had this system, and they just had they they just had a regular like ground jumper uh, without this like disconnect here. Uh, I don't know the year that they started doing that, but, you know, you got to keep in mind, um, FDs were only imported into the United States from 93 to 95, so only two years, and they continued um, elsewhere until 2002, so chances are, if you have an American bought um, FD, you have this system, um, and somewhere along the line, uh, Mazda actually um, sent out a um, quote-unquote recall or, or a safety message basically saying that this the grounding system was no longer good and that to replace it uh, with a, you know, just standard sort of um, uh, jumper. And give me a second and I'll be right back and I'll show you what the um, JP3 one looks like and that's basically what the uh, Mazda, um, you know, technical uh, update said to do. So give me a second and I'll be right back. All right, so that is what I'm talking about right there. That That is the firewall ground. Now, like I said, there you can see I'm on the right-hand side of the car. Now, like I said, keep in mind my car is a right-hand drive, but it uh, grounds to the firewall there and then connects to the back of the upper intake manifold. And like I said, it's just a more standard um, continuous jumper as opposed to that disconnectable one. Uh, you know, why you need to do this, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a super expert on these cars, so just bear with me. I'm just sharing with, like, what I've read in forums and stuff. So, uh, my understanding is that, you know, FDs, uh, unfortunately, um, one of their flaws is they can suffer some, for, from some voltage drops. Uh, it's just kind of the way these things were built. Uh, and when that happens, it can cause problems with, um, continuous, um, voltage to your injectors. and can cause some, obviously, issues with it running a little rough. So, 
uh, one of the ways you could potentially um, solve that or improve that is just to make sure you have good grounds. Uh, and that's kind of what this is. And to my understanding, that's what that um, Mazda uh, safety bulletin was about in the 90s when they issued it. So um, anyway, now, do you have to get these from JP3? Probably not. I mean, I'm sure you could just go to AutoZone or whatever and get whatever generic freaking jumpers that are roughly the same size. But, you know, the one kit was like 15 bucks. The other was like eight bucks or something like that. Uh, and it's the exact size that you need. And so and they have a lot of really other great FD products and stuff like that. So. Uh, anyway, um, that's probably the last project I'm going to do here for my FD. Um, unfortunately, mine's still running a little rough, so I am actually um, going to send mine off to uh, a shop uh, outside, in Aust uh, outside of Austin to have them take a look at it uh, and see. I don't know if it just needs to be tuned, or quite frankly, I don't know if uh, my Apex seals are bad and I just need to get a whole rebuild. I really have no idea. But uh, I'm going to take it up there on Monday. I actually got the next week off, which is awesome. Um, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. So I'll, I'll keep everybody posted on what's going on. And, uh, you know, if, if they do a good job, I'll, I'll give them some uh, uh, props too and whatnot. But uh, anyway, that is it for now. Uh, thanks for watching my videos, uh, liking and commenting, uh, all those of you who have. Uh, have a happy uh, Good Friday for those of you who are so inclined. Uh, everyone else, uh, just have a, a good regular Friday. And we'll, we'll see you next time.